Yeah, now, he's been called the Palestinian Rothschild and the Duke of Nablus. Munib al-Masri is the richest Palestinian. His investments account for a third of the territory's economy. And even though he's reportedly turned down the role of prime minister three times, he's using his business clout to try and create his vision for a future Palestinian state. Well, now he's opened up the palatial gates to his mansion in Nablus to tell us more about his businesses. While we were building, this was built during the Second Intifada. You have 20 Israeli tanks around the place here. And we were building to show that the Palestinians really, the resilience of the Palestinians, no matter what the Israelis destroys, we try to build. I went to school in the University of Texas in 1952, finished in 1956. I came back to Jordan. While I was working for an oil company, I started my own business of consulting my wife and I in geology. And from success, we, we were not successful in finding oil, but we were successful in finding minerals, sulfur, phosphate, water. Water was the most desirable to have. So I worked in all the deserts of the Arab world, and I found them lots and lots of water. Being in the right place in the right time, we accumulated our money and our wealth, but it was done through very, very hard work. Since Oslo, 1994, I have I almost stopped doing my family business and I have devoted to a company that we created in Palestine called Padico to start building for the future state of Palestine. But we suffer a lot. We put maybe $200 million in hotels and um, we are not getting the right return for the money that was put in these hotels. It's difficult to, uh, for the occupancy rate. Um, in Gaza, we have almost have a zero occupancy. In Bethlehem, we have 40, 45 percent occupancy, but the rate, the daily rate is very low to compete with other hotels. We have all what it takes to have a good economy, but as long as we are occupied, the economy will be uh, very weak because with economy, with a good economy, you have to have the freedom of movement of goods and services which we don't have. Gaza is 50% of, almost 50% of our economy and they are isolated. The only people that we can deal with is to buy goods from Israel. That's we're buying worth of four and a half, five billion dollars. I'm not so sure how much exactly. And we exporting to Israel 20 or 30 million dollars, which is nothing. But if we have the chance, we could export double the amount to the world. We were overlooking the place was bombed. There used to be two soap factories here because Nablus thrives on its soap and its olive oil and its olives. Enormous amount of money. It's plenty of cost, no matter what we get from the donors, which we thank, which we thank them for. But we take the money from here and we subsidize the, the uh, Israeli economy. Kids, they know my name. Yeah. I'm very happy they know me. These are the future of Palestine. Munib al-Masri showing us around Nablus there.